And then this business about taking everyone's guns away. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. I'm a gun owner. This is one of those statements that actually caught a lot of people by surprise last night in the debate between Kamala Harris and President Trump. But today I want to take a deeper dive and look at exactly what type of gun owner Kamala Harris and her running mate Tim Waltz actually are by looking at their histories revolving around the Second Amendment and statements that they've made. Because when it comes to guns and the Second Amendment as a whole, there are different levels to support. And those different levels will actually dictate what type of policies you're willing to pursue if these two were to get elected. Now, of course, I want you to have the best information possible. I don't want gun owners to fall for these kind of tricks that are played against us. And this goes for all voters. I want you to know exactly how these two stand on the Second Amendment before you go cast that vote on November 5th. At least you'll have a clear idea of how these two really view firearms and if they're going to protect those rights or not. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to give Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris my own rating to see if they are an actual supporter and defender of the Second Amendment, or if they fall somewhere in the middle, or if they're an absolute FUD or an absolute fraud. That's what I want to get to the bottom of. Now, I'm going to give you my strong opinions in this video, and of course, I want to hear yours. No matter if you agree or disagree, let me know what you think. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. Now, Tim Waltz actually for the longest time was seen as an adamant supporter of the Second Amendment, not just somebody that owned a gun or, you know, had a shotgun for hunting or anything like that, but he actually had an A rating with the NRA. Now, you can take that for what it's worth, if that means something to you or not. But the point is, people looked at Tim Waltz as an actual supporter, so much so that the NRA gave his campaign over $18,000 to help get him elected. Look up like many of you did five weeks ago and Dad said, Dad, you're the only person I know who's in elected office. You need to stop what's happening with this. I'll take my kick in the butt for the NRA. I spent 25 years in the Army and I hunt. And I gave the money back and I'll tell you what I have been doing. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment, but we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. So he's kind of one of those hybrid candidates. He's almost like somebody you think you would vote for, like a Tulsi Gabbard, you know, that you're like, man, this person's a, a, a Democrat, but I kind of like some of the things that they're saying. And when it came to the Second Amendment, Tim Waltz was that guy for a long time. But he said something changed after the Parkland shooting. And this is when he started bucking against the NRA and just openly came out against them. I mean, it was almost like an overnight switch. Now, I understand that emotions run very high when tragedies like that happen, but he had taken money from them for so long. And then all of a sudden he was like, oh, not going to support them any longer. Now, he did say that he was going to donate the money that was given to him by the NRA uh, there are reports that he did. I, I guess I can't question that. I can't prove it one way or the other. Somebody out there probably has at this point. But that's what he said he was going to do is donate that money. But remember, he had already got elected at this point with the help of the NRA. Now, when he became governor of Minnesota at this point, he had already fallen out of the good graces with the NRA. But the NRA really didn't do great things for his opponent either. I think they gave him like $2,000, but at that time, the NRA was really reeling from uh, internal uh, situations and issues they were having and just, you know, being one of the most corrupt kind of organizations when it comes to gun rights. And that's why a lot of people went over to Gun Owners of America during that transitional period as well. Either way, Tim Waltz went from somebody that was an adamant supporter to somebody that still supported the Second Amendment but was willing to use these common sense gun control measures. At least that's the language that's used. Now, remember, language is very important when you're talking about debates and policies, because if you hear I'm a gun owner, well, you may think, well, there's no way you can be against the Second Amendment if you own a firearm. But as you're about to see, that is not always the case. And this is a common tactic that Democrats will use. They will say, I'm a gun owner. I believe in the right to own a firearm, but, and that but is very important. And that's why 
language and the type of language that is used when we're having these conversations is very important. Now, once Tim Waltz got a majority in both houses, both chambers, and of course, as he was governor in Minnesota, he passed uh, sweeping legislation against firearms. Now, red flag laws are dangerous. Hey, if somebody is a danger to themselves or others, you can take their firearms for a certain period of time until they have proven to you that they are no longer a danger to themselves or others, but this system can be abused and it takes away all due process. It says that you are going to commit a crime before you've committed a crime, so I'm going to take your personal property. That is a dangerous precedent to set in our country, and unfortunately, it's been embraced by people on both sides of the political spectrum. Now, should we keep firearms out of the hands of people that are crazy or people that want to do harm? Absolutely, but again, due process is one of those things we are all afforded the right to, and you have to go through that process, in my opinion, in order to take somebody's firearms. So red flag laws and all that, it may sound like something small, but that was a really big deal, and Tim Waltz was behind it. As soon as he got that majority in his state, he made sure to pass all of that. And then he got it to the point where, hey, you have to ask permission now you got to pay a certain amount of money. I'm sure there's some kind of fee associated with that permit. Anybody that lives in Minnesota could probably tell us, but, uh, you know, down in the comments. But either way, it's like, hey, you got to ask permission to utilize your Second Amendment rights. So this, again, kind of falls on that level of what kind of advocate for the Second Amendment are you? Is it somebody that's going to say to its people, hey, you have to ask permission, and if somebody thinks you're a danger, we're going to be able to take your guns? That's what Tim Waltz did, right? That's what his record says. Now, I'll give him a grade at the end here, but not looking too good for old Timmy T. Now, we go to the other side and we look at Kamala Harris. So she's the one that kind of, you know, sparked all of this in the debate, and she says, I'm a gun owner. And then this business about taking everyone's guns away, Tim Waltz and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. Well, looking at past statements that she's made she actually owns a handgun for self-defense nothing wrong with that that's that's perfectly fine i talk about that a lot on this channel women should be armed right they should have that great equalizer because without it you're just asking to become a victim if you indeed are attacked by somebody else by a grown man men and women are different newsflash. And so men are predominantly stronger than you, even if you're in way better shape than them. So having a firearm is a fantastic way to keep your loved ones safe. If your wife or girlfriend works late at night, or even if they don't, even if they have a nine to five, you should take it upon yourself to train them, teach them how to use that firearm and make sure that they are carrying it. So I have no issue with Kamala Harris's um, having a firearm with her at all, right? Now, she had some kind of shady dealings in her uh, prosecution history. There were a lot of cases that are more than questionable as far as the ones that she did prosecute and the ones she pursued. I think there was over 1,900 uh, marijuana misdemeanor and felonies, uh, felony cases that she pursued. So I think part of that had something to do with the fact that she carried a firearm for self-protection. But again, nothing wrong with that. The biggest problem for Kamala is her past statements on so-called assault weapons. Now, when they talk about assault weapons, they're talking about the AR-15, which is a rifle that functions like every single other rifle on the planet. Uh, predominantly semi-autos, which is what most people have in the United States of America. One trigger pull, one bullet, that's how they work. So the so-called assault weapons ban is something that she's not only talked about, but she is willing to pursue. Now you may say, well, why hasn't she done that in the past three and a half years? Well, believe it or not, Joe Biden is actually more moderate than Kamala, which is why he was put there in the first place, because he's more electable than somebody like Kamala. But you know, we kind of see how this whole thing is, is playing out. It's a lot closer than what you would think. But either way, she hasn't really had the ability to do that, but 
even under Joe Biden, they have passed sweeping gun legislation or as much as they possibly can with the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which is something they've touted a lot. Now, unfortunately, this Safer Communities Act, the security aspect of it seems like it was removed entirely, right? There's $1.3 billion in this uh, budget or in this bill that can be allotted to schools for mental health services, which there's nothing wrong with that, but nothing in the way of additional security, mandatory having resource officers at schools, one, if not two at every single school, depending on the size, metal detectors, automatic locking doors. I mean, there's all kinds of things they could have put in place, but it mainly focuses on mental health, which I, again, I don't have a problem. I think that's a good thing, but also securing the schools is something I would a hundred percent have put in there as well. Either way, universal background checks, red flag laws, uh, also changing the requirements for dealers, right? So if you're somebody that, you know, sells a few guns a year and, you know, you make a profit on it, which most people that sell anything you want to make a profit on it, they have recategorized those people and they have put people in jail um, because of that, right? And so it's, uh, it's, it's more of an overreach type of legislation, but it's just the beginning of what she is willing to do because she has embraced the mandatory buyback. It does not have to be this way, as our friends in Australia have demonstrated. What would you do about the millions of specifically assault weapons right. that are already in circulation. What do you do about those? Well, there are approximately five million to your point, Craig. We have to have a buyback program and I support a mandatory buyback program. It's got to be smart. We got to do it the right way. I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. But we still have to deal with the over two million assault weapons that are currently in the streets of America. And so a buyback program I, is a good idea. If Congress fails to act, I'll give them 100 days to put a pill, bill on my desk for signature. And if they do not do it, I will put in place by executive action, a comprehensive background check requirement, and, and a ban on the assault weapons and the importation of assault weapons into our country. I'm done. And that's why we will work to pass universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. <laughs> These are her own words. This is not AI, right? These are things that she has openly said that she is willing to support. She's even said, like our great friends in Australia, what they've done, that's exactly what she wants. Now, this is a scary proposition. Most candidates that I've seen anyways are not talking about mandatory buybacks, right? They're, uh, they're more moderate than that because they know that in and of itself is pretty much a losing statement if you are trying to get elected to a high office, especially president of the United States. But she's openly said that. Now, just like every policy that she has, she of course has flip-flopped on it, making her a chameleon, just like Tim Waltz in that regard. Um, so unfortunately, people that don't do enough research will believe that. And that's what I talk about with gun owners hopefully not falling for these same tricks. And it's not just gun owners, voters all together. I hope they don't fall for this stuff that is going on. And the polls show me that it's way closer than what it should be, uh, especially considering somebody that doesn't have any real kind of policies at all. And policies like they have, I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. Now, if you're looking for a website with a donate button, well, go to Kamala's website. It has plenty of those. But if you're looking for actual policies, I would encourage you guys to actually go to Donald Trump's website where everything is laid out. Plus, you can look at his four-year history and see exactly what he did and things that he didn't do. Um, and also, your life. Was it better then or is it better now? Um, I can tell you in my personal circumstances and uh, people around me, my family, friends, all of that, we were doing much better uh, under the four years of Trump. Now let's give old Timmy T and Kamala some ratings here on their willingness to protect the uh, the Second Amendment. Now I'm going to say that they're actually worse than FUDs. I know it's kind of crazy. They are frauds. Like a flapjack on a griddle on a Saturday morning, they will flip on you in an instant. 
The worst part though is they're willing to just straight up lie to you and tell you that they are adamant supporters or I'm a gun owner and you know I believe in the second amendment but and then that's where their true feelings um, about this actually come into play. The rifles they always talk about banning are used in percentage wise in so few amount of crimes it doesn't make sense. If they really cared about saving any kind of lives they would go after handguns because those are used exponentially more. This is very uh, simple. A very simple Google search will tell you exactly what you need to know as far as the statistics between handguns, rifles, knives, fists, all of which are uh, used exponentially more than any type of rifle, not just the AR platform, but any type of rifle. And that's why their argument is so disingenuous because they know that if they can take away the scary big bad rifle and actually ban that, it's not going to have very much of an impact at all because most mass shootings actually involve handguns, not rifles. Uh, but a lot of the high profile ones that we've seen over the past few years have involved rifles and those are the ones that you typically hear about. Besides like Virginia Tech. But again, that's a stat that you can look up. It's very simple. The point is if they can take away the big bad AR and it doesn't really statistically have that big of an impact, it will be very easy to go down the line and say, you know what, that didn't really work, but if we take away handguns or semi-auto handguns or restrict them down to where they're basically useless and then take them away, that it will just snowball because that's what government does. They will absolutely go for the lowest hanging fruit and then if they get it, um, it will just snowball out of control and you will be left defenseless. A hundred percent these people would love nothing more than to take your guns away. But remember, even if you don't believe in the right to own a firearm, firearm owners keep all of this stuff in check. And that's why it was so important that it was number two in the amendments that were written. So just keep that in mind. A mandatory buyback program like Kamala's talking about is an absolutely terrifying thought. There's actually a video that I'm working on now where they did take people's firearms away from them in America. And that is a scary proposition where people actually get shot because there are police or National Guard going door to door, removing firearms from citizens. That is not a situation that you want in this country. Uh, not at all. So one is willing to take those firearms away from you. They will lie to your face and then laugh about it later behind your back. They're willing to do that 100% while the other side of the ticket, Trump and Vance, they will not do that to you. And that's exactly why I think there is only one clear cut option, not just for firearm ownership and protecting the Second Amendment, but also just quality of life all the way around from your groceries to your gas. Um, I know that me and my family, friends, Everybody I know, we were in a much better position when Trump was in office. To me, it's clear, but we're going to find out in about, I don't know, 50 days at this point. So let me know what you think. Of course, this is just my opinion, and I want to hear yours down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. See you in the next one, and as always, hold them down.